You'll never truly conquer Earth, you know. Not before you have to destroy it. What we're recording today is the um, music from a 20-year-old game, uh, Wing Commander, that George Olje uh, wrote the music for, say, 20 years ago. It's been reorchestrated and it's today has been performed by a full, huge orchestra. just amazed after 20 years, you know, that the enthusiasm is still there and it, it really just makes me want to do the best job possible and, and I'm going to bring these fans an amazing experience when the music's all finished. Wing Commander started life, say, 20 years ago uh, as an electronic music score, uh, electronically reproduced through samples, etc. And through the fan base, I think, that really love the music, and, and there's a lot of fans that really are really into the game's music, which is terrific music. <laughs> Uh, and now, of course, a lot of stuff is recorded with full orchestra, symphony orchestra. Back then, it wasn't. Obviously, you're a slave to whatever the technology is at the time. And I was asked by the producer to cr create orchestral type scores using technology where I can maybe only hear 12 notes at a time. So this recording today is what I had in my mind as I was composing that, obviously not being able to realize it in that sound. You know, how would real musicians be able to play this? Would they be able to sort of catch a breath in between all these phrases? One um, pitfall a lot of composers have is that they you know, if they're really good keyboard players, they don't have to take a breath. They perhaps never played in an orchestra and realized some of the limitations of the instruments.
I found the key to getting a more natural sound even with the old technology is to approach it in an organic way that an orchestra could play this. And that actually made my job of arranging it for this much easier because I pulled up those old MIDI files and used those as a reference and then I just basically spread it out amongst all 95 people instead of just 12 tracks of, of notes. Great first attempt. That was absolutely brilliant. Well done. <laughs> the big moment, two, two, one, five. Bom, 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 bom. This is uh, really plenty of that. And lots of contrabass there. Bom, 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 bom. 215. Uh, Alan, everyone at 208 you know, has uh, Marcato on a sustained note uh, as in that pyramid. Uh, don't back off too much after the attack. Let let the sound kind of follow through. Okay. Where we go from 208, we're building this pyramid of sound. Where it's accented. Don't back off too much after you've got the accent. It's still keep it forte. So it's building the sound rather than bang, bang. We're keeping a good uh, quality of sound. I was fortunate to learn that process when I worked on some of Robert Rodriguez's movies, where I was uh, in charge of the production of the score. So I think I've gotten pretty good at efficient use of time where as they're playing, you're, you're making notes. And uh, you know, when you, they're finished with the take, uh, the conductor will ask, what do you think? And then right away you say like bar 33, perhaps the trombones can use mutes there or you know, a little louder here. But uh, Alan was actually much more picky than me. I, <laughs> there were several times where I said, oh, that's fine. He said, well, I think we should pick it up again at bar 35. And I said, okay. So he's a man of great experience and great ability and amazing presence in front of the orchestra, both as a musician and a diplomat, because you cannot be a fine performer if you don't have a solid ego. So as a conductor, one of the challenges is to get a response from them, encourage them without them feeling either patronized or, you know, that it's really worth their time to put a lot of energy into this and get something done. And he's a master at that. I relied a lot on the choir patches and those old simulated instruments. There's an amazing organic human quality that a choir brings to any kind of music, I think. And um, it's funny because I depended a lot on that sound to make a full sounding 
piece with those old MIDI instruments. And I, I intentionally made sure all those parts were covered in the orchestra. One, to make sure that it sounds full, and two, so the choir can hear what notes they're going to sing as the, music, the orchestra's playing in their headphones. Um, but I, I'm, I've only recorded a choir once before, but it wasn't as big as the one I'm going to get tonight, so I'm excited to hear what the result's going to be. And I'm, I'm encouraged to hear they actually rehearsed. The orchestra sight read everything. The singers actually were motivated to get the music ahead of time and practice before they came. One of the great things about orchestral live music played by real people, which is something you will not get from electronically re reproduced music, whether it's sampled or, or whatever, is soul and spirit. And it's that that makes it really exciting. these musicians are working so hard to get it right. You really feel the blood, sweat and tears of the players. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Uh, could you please just do me one small favor? Could you just sign my collection? Of course. Thank you. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, this is a cool moment for us. Tell me wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I wanna so, see. Hold on. I, it's it's nothing, nothing, nothing special. Nothing special. It's just, it's just, uh, Wing Commander 3, my copy of Wing Commander 3, and I, I just would like to have a, um, an uh, autograph on it. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> and I just hope it won't stick or something, you know. So of course. <laughs> Yeah, Bratislav, the cellist, uh, when we were all finished, I gave him a big, big hug for performing with us, and, and uh, he said, I just have one request. I said, what? He said, would you sign my original copy of Wing Commander 3? And then he brought it. He had the box from 20 years ago that he saved all these years and, and, uh, and you know, melted my heart. So he gave me a pen, and I wrote something for him, and, and he was just... I, I, I'm not used to this kind of <laughs> attention. And, you know, so, like I said before, I think I've had the rare opportunity to impact so many people's lives with this that I had no idea at the time. And 20 years later, it's a dream come true for me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Close up, all right, and now, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, sure.
Working with George has been an absolute pleasure. He's a true professional. He knows how to write music. He knows how to orchestrate. And that makes a big difference to the musicians. If it's properly written, even if it's really difficult, which this music was, very, very difficult music, really de demanding from all sections, especially the brass. And the horns really got a roast today. Uh, but because it was well written, well orchestrated, and the whole thing sounded wonderful, then the players just get into it and they, they just love it. And they, they'll give everything they've got plus. Uh, and it was, it, as I say, it's been great working with George. It really has. I love it exactly the way it turned out. That was fantastic. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything. Really? I'm serious. <laughs> it's it's so crazy that it's perfect. Yeah. Great. So what, what are we doing now? We've got no more music. Well, maybe we can uh, we can do some percussion overdubs. Yeah. Well, should we dismiss the orchestra then? Yeah. The orchestra finished. Yes. Hey. Wow. Rob. Listen, that is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. You know, you get better every time I come here. It really is. I want to run down there and thank everybody. Yeah. You know, as an artist, you like to have an impact on the world somehow. And I've been very fortunate to make a living as a, a musician and composer for many years. Uh, I have to say at this point, I'm thinking that, you know, when all is said and done, I'll look back and this, this one project is probably going to be perhaps the most significant artistic uh, contribution I've made because you know, you, you never know uh, how good something is when you look at it many times. And, and just to see the response uh, from all these people about how much they love the music, how much they love the games, and how big a part it was in their lives, um, you know, it's, it's very humbling. And I, I wanted to do the absolute best thing I could do for them in this, in this recording process, and I think we're getting there. The reason why now games music is so vibrantly orchestral is because the fans want it. If it wasn't for the fan base, we wouldn't be in work. So, you know, applaud to the fans. Yeah, thank you. Big job. Yeah. Hey, all you Wing Commander fans, I'm so honored that you trusted me to do this, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity to come here and do this. You're gonna hear an amazing product when it's all finished. And uh, thank you for making my life so rich and full of, full of dreams and, and joy. Tell me why you're both so enamored with Wing Commander. And okay. What were you arguing about? Uh, well, <laughs> first we were arguing about about Wing Commander Prophecy, Wing Commander Five, and Wing Commander Four. Which one is better? And uh, I, I was, uh, I was saying, I was just saying that uh, the, the flight engine is more sophisticated and the um, gameplay is more fluid and it's so true. on. It's and true. Uh, he's uh, he's saying. I, I just think the plot isn't quite as good. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's many elements. Yes. Okay, that's many true. Elements. That's, that was um, the nice thing about the game is that it was the it was one of the first to meld really good plot right. with very intense gameplay. Yeah. And uh, and of course just the, um, the the whole movie work the whole um, like actors. Yeah. 
playing Mark Hamill mm -hmm. and yep. uh, Tom Wilson. It, uh, yeah, it was very nice to have Biff and Biff and, 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 and Luke Skywalker, and Luke Skywalker in the together, same game, right? <laughs> and yeah, and uh, and then we just uh, we just uh, we came back um, back to 1992 where the Wing Commander, the second part, mm -hmm. came out, and of course in. The computer games in Poland just started to grow. The, the whole market started to grow, and of course, um, I bought it just because I was 1992. I was like 12 years old, and um, I am a Star Wars fanatic, <laughs> and I bought it only because um, somebody told me uh, you can sit there in the rear turret and you can. Sword. Right, yes. Rosa. And I just bought it because, yes, finally I can fly like Millennium Falcon and sit in the rear <laughs> turret. They're coming to the <laughs> coming to West. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, but then it was. Um, uh, and then we were discussing about uh, getting it run on the old computers like DOS system and configuring auto exec and configuring config. So I'm a software engineer now, and I have to say that was probably the beginnings of being a software engineer was figuring, oh my goodness, how do I allocate enough memory or keep <laughs> enough memory from being allocated so that I can start this game? Because it would always, you'd type WC or WC2, yeah. and it would just not run, and you'd be like, oh, sorry, not enough conventional memory. Right, <laughs> and then just oh. high memses and so yep, on that's and so right. on, yep. just like winning this 500, <laughs> 553? Something like that. I, I, Kilobytes of memory. God, it was so difficult. Yes, I mean, you know, I got 2,000 times that here. And, and, and if, you, if you were unlucky to have this pitch pack for a Wing Commander 2. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so it was like uh, almost impossible to, yes. get, to get it running. But uh, if you... Did you remember Moslo? Do you ever have to use Moslo? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Of course, but... Um, so well, the way the timers used to work is the timers would would survey the speed of the computer at the very beginning and would find a divisor so that they could effectively slow the game down for multiple speeds of computer. Right. Well, at some point, they basically hit a division by zero, and computers got so fast that, that their initial timing took zero seconds. So the division by zero basically made them revert to a default speed, which was way too fast. Crash burn. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd point yourself at the tiger's claw or the, or the Concordia, right. turn right into it, you know. Right. Oh. So... <laughs> Oh, the memories. Oh, yeah. And now you can just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, you have those box. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, and, and when you go to good old games. Right. right. It's, yeah, it just has now all Now it's advertisement time. It's all Polish <laughs> site, oh, good Pol old games. Is that Polish? It's Polish. Oh, I don't know. Of right? course. Yeah. What do you mean, of course? What? What do you mean, of course? What? <laughs> So, um, I actually have no clue what they're talking about. I, <laughs> well, I was just in a cubicle okay, so, writing the music. So, okay, what, uh, what I'm telling, the Polish, <laughs> Polish side, good old games, GOG.com, has the whole mm -hmm. collection of Wing Commander games, including Wing Commander 3, Wing Commander 4, and Wing Commander the, the, 5. Yeah, and I guarantee you, every single person buying them already owns them. Right. But you buy them because they're already right. configured, and right. you don't so, have to spend the time getting them working. Well, it's just basically, you install it, you yeah. play it, you're done. And, and it's on Macintosh as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. probably. Yeah, that's what I use. I mean, right. So. <laughs> Were you a gamer? No. <laughs> Do you know what they're talking about? Um, I recognize a few key vocabulary words. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs>